Welcome to another episode of the Web3 Talk series. My name is Ornella Hernandez, and today we have a special guest to talk all about interoperability. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing all right, doing all right, excited. Uh, as is uh, with the industry, when things start picking up, uh, everyone has a whole lot more energy, right? Yes, yes, definitely. So Khalid, you are the Chief Operating Officer of the Glitter Finance Protocol. Yeah. So we're gonna get into what all that is and, and all the good things about interoperability. But first, I wanted to just learn a little bit about you. Sure. And since you mentioned you're so excited about mm, the times right now, the prospect of a bull market. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Well, um, you know, uh, at its base level, uh, it goes that uh, during bull markets, obviously, there's a lot of uh, money to be made. But uh, when you look at it a little bit further, you see that uh, because there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of opportunity, uh, it brings a lot more um, attention to the space. And hence, there's a lot more funding for uh, companies. There's a, lot, uh, there's a lot more people and entrepreneurs with ideas who are like, okay, well, now's the time, you know, this is heating up, I'm gonna start to capitalize. So it's uh, it's sort of like summer at the beach, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, every, you know, everyone's out and about, everyone's having fun, yeah. everyone's doing something. Uh, whereas when you go in winter... Uh, yeah, no one likes to so sell winter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So then what would you like to happen or expect to happen for 2024? Ooh, uh, tough question. Uh, just because, um, you know, uh, everyone and their dog has some form of uh, prediction for how it's going to go. And uh, this crypto, we all know that anything can happen yes. at any time. It changes every day. Uh, exactly. Uh, and we've been through so many uh, black swans mm -hmm. that uh, we may be a little bit jaded. But, uh, you know, fingers crossed, uh, I think we'll have, you know, a little bit of a sideways market up until the halving. Okay, so April, spring yeah. time. And uh, it, it, if uh, the world markets can keep it together and we don't fall into a recession, uh, we should have a good rest of uh, 2024 and beginning of 2025. Okay, let's, uh, let's yeah, that's for that. It is, but uh, <laughs> toes crossed as well. All right, all right. So tell me more about Glitter Finance. It is a cross-chain bridge and mm. protocol. Yeah. So I know it's been around for almost three years. Yeah, right? a little bit. Okay. Right, yeah. Um, and it's also a bridge between Algorand and Solana blockchains. Yes. Okay. So let's get into first just what is a cross-chain protocol <laughs> okay. at, at a base level. So, um, you know, what uh, I like to explain to my, let's say, friends who aren't in Web3, when they ask me, what do you do? I'm like, yeah. How do you do that? How, how do I, <laughs> you know, how do I go about explaining this? And the simplest way to explain it is, uh, you know, everyone's heard of Bitcoin. Everyone's heard of, let's say, Ethereum. Uh, if you build an app or you hold money or value or whatever on one of these chains, you are unable to use the services available to you on the other chain mm -hmm. and you are unable to uh, pay for services or transfer information or whatever to another chain. Um, every layer one chain is an enclosed ecosystem. Um, and hence the need for bridges and what bridges do mm -hmm. is it's a connection between these two disparate ecosystems which allows them to transfer information and value from one place to another thereby increasing the buzzword interoperability right right uh so uh let's say you have a DeFi protocol on uh solana and uh that's only open to people who operate on solana whereas uh i'm sure there's a lot of people who operate on algorand and have hmm. uh, assets over there as well uh when you open it up to uh, when you connect the two blockchains, you allow people from Algorand to transfer value uh, from Algorand to Solana and find perhaps services that they couldn't find on Algorand and vice versa. Okay. And it also increases competition. So 
uh, hey, um, you know, the, the biggest lending protocol on uh, Algorand is giving out uh, loans with Algo as uh, collateral at 3%. Uh, I'm on Solana. I want to win over their business. I'm going to start offering them at 2.9. Mm -hmm. uh, so all in all, it it's also better for the consumer and better for the user in that they have more options across wider spaces. And why does Glitter work specifically or particularly with Algorand and Solana? Okay, so um, we do work with other chains and I'll, mm -hmm. uh, I'll explain that, but our core product and what we launched was between Algorand and Solana. And that was due to a myriad of factors. Uh, first and foremost, we actually got um, very good uh, backing and help from the Algorand Foundation. Uh, we received quite a sizable grant from them. Um, and Solana at the time and now, uh, still now, uh, is a very active ecosystem with a lot of um, a lot of activity and a lot of new projects coming online. So we have one super stable uh, blockchain with great tech and a very loyal community. Uh, another one that's uh, up and coming with a whole lot of uh, value locked mm -hmm. and new and exciting projects coming up every day. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of excitement across both ecosystems when we first launched. And hence, it was it was a good thing because most bridges operate on uh, across the EVM ecosystem yeah. because uh, everything is standardized and it's a lot easier to build a bridge between, for example, BNB and Ethereum uh, or the Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum um, or uh, Polygon in its previous situations and, uh, and Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain. Not as easy uh, as uh, our CTO will tell you uh, to build um, a cross between Algorand, for example, and Solana. Uh, not to say that they're not standardized or the tech standards are high, but uh, they're just very different technologies. Right. Okay. So basically, there are too many blockchains that operate in a mm. siloed form. Exactly. And so we need bridges to help that communication, right? Bridge that communication. Yeah. But then, that makes me ask, why are there so many layer ones in the first place? Do we need this many different blockchains? The honest answer, probably not. Um, but uh, as with any new endeavor, um, you know, you have a lot of uh, a lot of people coming at uh, the problem from uh, different angles and different aspects, mm -hmm. right? So. I, for example, see a blockchain the, uh, design that will help me solve a problem in a certain way. And that's informed by my experience and uh, whether technologically or personally in that, hey, you know what, when I go and, you know, park, uh, I see that uh, none of this parking is smart and there is nothing provable. I want to build an app or a blockchain that makes, you know, uh, every public parking spot and every payment for parking um, accessible. That'd be or, nice. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, whereas someone uh, in another part of the world is dealing with food insecurity or with right. something else. And they're like, why the hell are you looking at parking? You know, we've, we've got bigger problems over here. Uh, and hence, you have a lot of very smart people coming into the space, uh, but it's still a new space. Right, okay. Uh, so each address is a different issue. And over time, it's a crucible, right? <laughs> uh, over time, uh, it's gonna boil down to uh, people that really do solve these problems right. and uh, gain adoption. Well, it also tends to fragment the liquidity Absolutely. within the industry, which I don't think is a it's good thing. It's not a good thing <laughs> at all. Um, and hence why uh, we come back to bridges, mm -hmm. right? 
and we saw this in, for example, uh, the best ex uh, the best example would be uh, DeFi Summer in 2021. Yeah, yeah right? that's right. Uh, there were new protocols coming online almost every day. And uh, you had all the, uh, everyone was excited. Everyone was putting their money into different protocols. And tomorrow there is a new protocol that comes online. This one was paying you 20%. Uh, this one wants to grab market share, so ends up paying you 30%. Um, you see everyone take their money out of this protocol yeah. or out of this chain or ecosystem and uh, and put it into the next one. That was a fun time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it was a game of uh, musical chairs, right? So money kept going from one protocol to the, uh, to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, for all the hard work that gets put in to these ecosystems and these protocols, uh, when capital is unstable and fragmented, uh, it leaves people fighting over scraps, right? And uh, an ecosystem uh, or a project or a DAP with really good yeah. uh, tech may not succeed due to lack of liquidity, right? So uh, the more you can make things interoperable and make uh, or allow people to transfer value easily, uh, the better it is for everyone. Okay. And what other issues or challenges mm -hmm. uh, do bridges and particularly uh, Glitter Finance yeah. solve for? So um, there's an, a fragmentation of liquidity, mm -hmm. but our biggest challenge is also liquidity. Oh, right? okay. Uh, so so? Uh, in order to operate uh, between, let's say, Algorand and Solana, uh, we need to make sure that there is enough liquidity on both sides of the bridge right. to facilitate the movement of capital from one side to the other and to make uh, tokens freely exchangeable, right? Uh, the next step after that is, all, uh, or to try and sort of bypass that, one of the things that we try and do is to make uh, the bridge tokens directly spendable or introduce usability uh -huh. to these bridge tokens on the other side. So, okay. for example, yeah, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, uh, uh, to make it easier to digest, I create a token called X Algo, uh -huh. and that's basic, or let's call it Wrapped Algo, right? Uh, and that's basically uh, alg uh, and a representation of Algorand uh, on the Solana blockchain, and that is backed one to one with uh with Al uh, with algorand that's held in our vaults on the algorand blockchain right but how does that gain value uh a uh trust verify on the blockchain see that okay there is this many w algo issued here mm -hmm. and there is this many w algo in the vault over here uh but still uh, if I don't have any partners or any protocols, then WALGO is totally useless to me on the other side. Uh, mm -hmm. Because who in Solana is going to accept it right. for their game DeFi protocol or whatever? Uh, I have to go and partner up with protocols and say, hey, accept uh, ALGO. Or uh, I have to create liquidity pools and then um, bring in our community to add to these liquidity pools. To, uh, to make W algo, um, to give liquidity to W algo and make it, uh, for example, swappable for Solana or USDT or USDC okay. and so on. Okay. And who else is trying to do a similar thing? Like, who would you consider your main competitors? I know there's a distinction between like layer zeros, like Cosmos and, and, uh, and, and uh, Polkadot. Polkadot. Yeah. So who would you consider your main competitors? Uh, in this probably... Uh, uh, something like uh, Synapse or someone like uh, Wormhole. Okay. Uh, and uh, every one of them uh, looks at things in a slightly different way and does things in a slightly different way. And the distinction, uh, the main distinction being in that uh, protocols like ours uh, allow for the transfer of information and value. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas... Uh, like information like... Messaging, even? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and that's the, uh, 
for example, not to get too into the weeds, but one of the biggest challenges between uh, in connecting Solana and Algorand is um, that each one of them messages at different speeds. Oh, okay. So how do you get uh, how do you synchronize to make sure that you know the messages get from here to here at around the same time um, and then you have um, you have layer zeros like Cosmos and Polkadot and those on the other hand are uh, blockchains in and of themselves mm -hmm. uh, which people can build on and because they're layer zeros they come pre-built with interoperability to everyone else who has built on them. And uh, you can automatically message and transfer value across uh, all other blockchains within the Polkadot ecosystem okay. or the Cosmos ecosystem. So um, in the hierarchy, layer zeros sit way down here yeah. and uh, are more of an intrinsic thing. Uh, whereas bridges are more of a dApp that's built on top of pre-existing technology to try and connect it all together. Okay. Got it. Um, as a further expansion, and just to uh, give you an idea of sure. um, what we're doing, in um, uh, you know we ha we did connect these two ecosystems together, uh, and we are looking at connecting other ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have seen uh, we have presented other solutions because we're trying to become a one stop shop for uh cross chain right and transfer of value so what does that look like uh so for example we have um in con uh, in conjunction and leveraging circles underlying uh technology um we have created a cross chain uh portal for usdc oh, right okay and instead of just algorand and solana it includes all chains to which USDC is native. So uh, you will see other implementations of stuff like this, but it will mostly um, involve wrapped USDC and liquidity uh, pools. So you have to swap on one end, uh, transfer across and swap on the other end. So that's three operations. Whereas with ours, you uh, you know, you hand over your native USDC and in a single operation, you receive it on your target chain as native USDC. Um, that's one side product that will be built out further. And we have more and more been listening to our community and transitioning into a DAO. Um, and that actually has thrown us a bit for a loop uh, because we did have an, uh, an expansion planned uh, into a blockchain uh, called uh, Rain Rainbow Network to start. Okay. Um, and That's not fully operable yet. Not yet. Um, and that was uh, going to look a certain way and be built using certain technologies. Mm -hmm. After consultations with our DAO, we're starting to change the design on that a little bit to fit it more towards what our community is calling for. And that would be something more akin to um, what you were speaking about earlier, which was Cosmos and Polkadot. Okay. So okay. transitioning from, you know, uh, from the app layer down into a, a layer one, layer zero. Okay. So a lot of stuff in the works. All right, amazing. I do have to address one thing. Mm -hmm. um, there were rumors that Glitter Finance had like some sort of shutdown or that there were issues recently. Could you address those? Sure. Uh, so we were speaking about uh, liquidity earlier mm -hmm. and expansions, and we did develop a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of technology that was uh, very, very, very expensive to develop. So we did uh, downsize uh, the team quite significantly. Okay, so there were some layoffs. Yeah, uh, but uh, in terms of the community-facing aspect of it, uh, our you know our, our products are still running as is. So this is all uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, and we are in the process of raising capital 
to be able to push on with our further expansions and turning into a, a layer zero. I see, I see. So soon we'll see a rainbow network. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So how did you even become so passionate about interoperability and cross-chain networks in the first place? Um, well, um, I come from a background of, let's say, traditional finance and uh, and technology, right? Um, and th my first introduction into uh, Web3 was through uh, Bitcoin. And then you start to discover all coins. What year was that? Do you remember the price of Bitcoin at the time? Ooh, we all have that. Uh, <laughs> we all have that story and that regret that keeps us up at night <laughs> where, oh, if I had only filled my bags yeah. at that time. Um, so I still remember um, setting, up the, uh, setting up the software and things were not as well developed. And uh, while Bitcoin was at somewhere between 180 and 220 dollars okay um and I, I think i was doing my software engineering degree at the time and hence uh, the appeal was uh the tech side uh right uh, this is uh you know there's a new paradigm uh cryptography and money on the internet okay. and easily transfer so as a developer in you that, that was, was all like, to it yeah this is awesome <laughs> um and then uh, for one reason or another, I never actually ended up uh, mining, uh, which I kick myself for. You could still get into it. Uh, oh, I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, at, at the time. time. Um, and then I sort of drifted away. Um, and, you know, uh, life takes over. You start to uh, worry about work and after i graduated uh, started working went and did my masters etc yeah and went over completely to the dark side uh <laughs> no, it's not the dark side <laughs> uh, i i don't think so but uh you know uh i went into finance okay and uh sort of shifted my focus there completely and then you know my uh one day my brother calls me up and he's like yo uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's on the move. You, <laughs> you need to get in on this. And I was like, well, dude, what the hell? He's like, it's, you know, it, it's a couple thousand dollars. I was like, oh my God, I remember it at 220. I could have been rich. Yeah. Um, and uh, it sort of went from there. Uh, at first, I was very dismissive. Mm. Uh, as, I think lots uh, of people are like, yeah. Uh, I was like, dude, uh, the, this doesn't sit right with yeah. me. Yeah. Especially coming from a tr traditional financial background. You look at stocks, you look at uh, bonds, etc. Yeah. And it's a lot um, It's a lot easier. You're more used to it. And it's a lot easier to tell where the value derives from. Definitely, definitely. Well, now that you're in, it's hard to get out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, once you take a... Uh, uh, once you get a little dose of uh of crypto yeah. uh, and said brother uh eventually proceeded to transfer a thousand usdt into my wallet mm. and he's like uh i'm done trying to convince you uh you know here's a thousand dollars play around with it come back to me <laughs> that's uh, how you learn <laughs> yeah uh, and uh i was hooked uh, right. um and then uh, that was actually one of the first challenges that I came across, which is, oh, he gave me a thousand dollars on Ethereum, but I really want to, uh, you know, uh, put them into Binance Smart Chain because this protocol is offering so and so. Right. And that's how I got introduced to eventually to Glitter. Uh, you know, um, we all fall back into our comfort zones and what we know. So uh, I was doing uh, venture capital investing before. And uh, very quickly, I found myself um, doing some venture investing privately and through groups. Okay. You've held many hats then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, it keeps things interesting, right? Well, we are running out of time. Oh. So just one last question. How do you envision a, well, do you envision at all a fully mm. blockchain enabled world or interoperable world? Um, mm. I think... Uh, it's going to be awesome. 
number one. <laughs> uh, but I think that there's a lot of work to do and we are in a constant state of flux. So um, with the butterfly effect, you know, uh, introduction of legislation here or something happening here yeah. could change the entire outlook of the space. We will have blockchain because at its core, it's a useful technology and it's better than the th uh, than what we have in place now. Mm -hmm. uh, and most likely in order to gain mass adoption, it's going to be abstracted. Away. The complexity that we deal with today is going to be abstracted away from the everyday user. But what form that will take? Yeah, TBD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, definitely. well, keep me updated on Glitter Finance. And thank we'll you do. so much for your time today. It was a pleasure talking to you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. Yes, definitely. Everyone go check out Glitter Finance for more information. And please check out other episodes of the Web3 Talks. See you later, guys.